Hello YouTube, this is APC coming at you with another tutorial. Um, today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about or, um, arrays and how you can use them to create a grid of rooms. This type of um, switching of rooms is often used in an adventure game. You see a little bit in Legend of Zelda and many other ones. This was suggested by NHMLLR725, Newmiller75, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. He asked me to make matri make story about matrices, and um, to my knowledge, Game Maker does not support matrices, so I'm going to make it about two-dimensional arrays, which are very similar and can achieve most of the same things. So let's get started. I'm only going to need one sprite for this tutorial. Call SPR player, and let's just fill it in black. Now, um. This tutorial is going to create nine rooms. I'm going to show you how to coordinate the rooms. So, you can make a background for each room in order to um, keep it coordinated. So, um, just fill it in with a random color. I'm going to do orange because orange is an awesome color. And then um, put some text in it. And let's say zero. Make sure it's in a font that fills up most of the room. Black, so read it. All right. Now I'm going to repeat this for the other rooms until you get to background eight. Create all the backgrounds. They're going to create rooms to correspond to the backgrounds. So let's go to backgrounds. This will move starts. Through the background. No tiling. Stretch. There you go. And then repeat this for each room. Once you finish adding the backgrounds, we can add our objects. So call obj play here. And make sure it's clicking on persistent. It just means that it will stay in existence throughout each room. And give it spring. So first going to create. Now I'm going to teach you a little bit about how arrays work. So let's say we create two variables and I'll call it array. This is technically three variables, but um, I can use it as an array because the only thing, well, between variables and arrays, the, looking at it like this, is notation. Arrays have these things right here. That makes a difference. So if I put down arrays, if I type down arrays 0, it'll reference 5, type down this, it'll reference 6, and so forth, make that 4, make it really easy. But the thing that's cool about arrays is that I can make another variable, let's call it value set to um, 2 let's say. So if I, if I say array value then it'll give me 4. And so and I can say array my value minus 1 will give me 1 because 2 minus 1 is 1 and the 1 in the array is 6. So that's the basic, basic of arrays. Now, for this tutorial, we're going to do multi-dimensional arrays. Multi-dimensional arrays are very similar to the way normal arrays are, only they have two arguments again. You can think of an array as an array of arrays, sort of. So, zero indicates which array you're talking about, and then the next zero indicates which, ar which um, value within, the, within that array you want. So, it's easy to imagine as a grid or a, a chessboard. So, you can say this one is the... Is one side eight, you know, A, B, C, D, and then this one is the array within that, which goes from one to nine or something like that, or one to eight, I think, in chessboards. So you could have something like A, E, or A, five, theoretically, and that would be referencing that that part of the grid. But in this case, we're gonna make the first one zero, zero, and we're gonna make this one basically show that the this one would be the Y. So this would indicate which row. This one would be for the X, so this one would indicate 
which column. So this one's the top left column, and we want that one to be room here. So we're going to just imagine it as a 3x3 three three grid with room 0 at the top left, and then going to the right, 1, 2, and then be numbered all the way to 8. So I'm going to copy this two more times. So the next column, I want it to be room 1. The next column, I want it to be room 2. And then now there's three in that, in that row. So we'll go on to the next row. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. The next row is going to be the same thing, only it's row 1 instead of row 0, and then go on to row 2. Now let's keep counting. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, next part. We're going to put down, make new, we're going to make a new variable called room current x. I'll set equal to, let's say, 1. Now, room current y is equal to 1. Now, here's the main, the, the fundamental uh, thing you understand for this tutorial. Room go to. Now, this function will send you to whatever room I put between these brackets. So if I type down array room current y room current x, it'll head over to y equals 1 and x equals 1, so it'll head over to room 4. And that's how it works. So now, make sure you understand that, because that's very important. So next step event. Now I'm going to add the basic four-way movement, which uh, down five times. So that's four movement. Now, for the following code, I'm basically going to do is I'm going to say whenever the player is outside the room, go to this different room. So for the first time, we do if y is less than zero. This means that the player has gone out of the room, above the room. So you want it to go to, go to the room where that's above the room that you're currently in. First off, let's program the going to the room. Room go to array and we'll call it. So this is the room you're currently in. Room current y, room current x. And in order to go to the one above you, we'll do y minus 1. And then in order to change um, the settings for room room, we'll say room current y minus equals 1. And then we want the player to show up in the bottom of the room, because if we don't change the by the x, it'll just be outside the room again, and then it'll just go through this constant loop and it'll until it runs out of the boundary. You're right. So in order to set it to the bottom of the room, we're going to say y equals room height. Now the reference point for the sprite is in the top left corner, so if you just put that down, it will sh it wouldn't show up because it would just barely be slivering into the room, so we'll put down minus sprite height to make sure it's visible. So now duplicate this three times. Two, three. Oh, and by the way, this, this version of spacing is... Um, was also recommended by NHMLLR725, and it's supposed to, it's probably gonna help you guys understand this a little better. So space out a little bit. There we go. Okay, for the next one, let's say x is less than zero, so you leave the room to the left. So we want to go to the x minus one, and then we'll set x minus one, and x equals room width minus sprite width. Next one. We can do if y goes under the room. So for that we'll do y is more than room height. For that we want to be the y plus in the array. So change the value here. And then here we got to do y equals zero. That'll be the top of the room. Here we'll do y. No, y is that's fine. X is more than room width.
then uh, so it's leaving there to the right so at x plus one and blue. add one to the, to the variable and set x equal to zero okay now it should work we're starting in room zero so we'll add the player there there you go. As you can see, it automatically went over to room 4 like it was supposed to. The moving is working, which is no surprise. So if I go to the left side, it should take me to room 3. There, we room 2. Now if I go up, it should take me to room 0. Room 1. Back to room 4. And it is working perfectly. And it should be. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. You know, please rate, comment, subscribe. Trail is now off the list. Um, you know, if you have any more ideas to tutorials I can do in the future on this list, um, and please give me a comment. Um, this was a request, and he requested me last week, and I, I did it directly. So yeah, I'll always do them like the in the next tutorial if you make a request. So yeah, hope, hope you guys learned something. Cool. See you guys later.